Hey gang, AV here, and welcome to my review for the Boss Fight Studios Vitruvian Hacks King Lance Steel Blade, the King of the Accord. Here he is in the package. As you can see, he is a carded figure, but he's not a blister card. It is actually collector-friendly packaging. You can just bend up these plastic uh, flaps to slide out the card and gain access to the figure, display it, and then put it back in as if it were never removed. I have mixed feelings about that, as I've said before. And all I will say is that... Um, before you purchase the figure, you're going to want to take the time to actually look through the bubble and to just to the best of your ability, make sure all of his items are still there. Um, just because, not saying anybody's going to try to rip you off or anything like that, but obviously if you can remove the figure and then put the figure back in with it, the number of accessories he comes with, things happen. Sometimes things get misplaced and sometimes... Um, he may be missing something. So if you get something on the aftermarket, be sure to check and make sure that you've got all the accessories before you buy it as best you can. So anyway, here he is in the package. Um, very good uh, original artwork on the front of the box, which is always nice. They, the artist they have working on these things is top notch. Um, as you can see, HACKS is an acronym for Highly Articulated Character Kit System. That basically means that the figure's Body parts, um, various accessories, heads, etc., are all interchangeable with other figures from the line. Maybe not all the figures from the line, but the majority of the figures in the line, you can mix and match and kit bash to your heart's delight. <laughs> um, very good aspect to these. Makes them very easy to customize and personalize, even if you're not a customizer, to make your, your characters look different when they're up on the shelf. Very big fan of that. Uh, here he is on the other side of the package. As you can see, there is a file card. I've mentioned this and before. I'm a huge fan of the file cards. They're roughly about the same size as the G.I. Joe ones from back in the day. Um, if you would like to read it, feel free to pause the video and do so now. And once again... Big fan of these. Uh, I love the fact that they flesh out the characters and give them um, that extra level of personality and history. And it, it really serves the line well. Makes makes the whole collection seem that much more uh, deep and, and meaningful. Very good. Not sure what else I can say about it. <laughs> um, here are some other figures that are also available. Um, I do believe... I have most of these, maybe not all of them. Um, I have reviewed a few of these already, however, so be sure to check out my channel to see the videos for the ones I've already reviewed and to keep an eye out for future ones because they will be showing up in the weeks and months ahead. So keep checking back. Here is a uh, QR code that'll take you directly to the Boss Fight Studio app. I'll be honest, I haven't downloaded the app yet. I always just go directly to the store itself. Maybe I should download the app. Um, but I assume this is where you can purchase this figure as well as all the other ones that are currently available. It is cheaper to purchase them directly from Boss Fight than it is to go to places like eBay, for example. So, without further ado, let us open up the package by folding that plastic flap over and then removing the contents of the bubble. Let's put this off to the side here. And get the camera down just a little bit. And have a look at the figure and all of his accessories. Right off the bat, we're going to have a look at his standard. I believe that's what this is called. Um, it is taped in. To the back of the car of the tray here trying to get it out there we are very nice i like this a lot um it's very tall about an inch taller than the figure so when a figure's holding this this will actually be held up pretty high and it's got a his coat of arms on there i believe very, very nice. I do like this accessory. I wish other figures came with this. 
type of thing. That way you could have them all lined up while using it. Um, that appears to be where his cape was. I left the cape on the figure, apparently, when I put him back in the package. I have opened this figure once before. It's kind of funny that it fits on the figure, and he's got a spot in the card, in the tray for it as well. You would think it wouldn't have fit on the figure in the tray if there was a spot for it. Yeah, apparently there's a spot. Oh, well, wait, you know what? It's meant to be on the figure. They cut that out so that it would fit. That's pretty interesting. Okay. Like I said, I had this figure open before, but it's been a while, so I forgot all about that. All right. <laughs> Never mind. I'm learning as I go. All right, so uh, he does have a bag full of accessories here. Apparently, I didn't open the bag when I had the figure out last time. We'll open it today because there's more than just his hands in there. So, there we are. He comes with his figure stand. I've mentioned this at length in previous videos. It's just basically a, a black figure stand. It's got two, two, two foot pegs. Um, it's in the shape of the Boss Fight logo. And it does work quite well when, when keeping the figure standing upright and balanced. Always good to have a figure stand with your figure. Um, he comes with two of these. They are mirrored. Um, these are his thigh armor plates. They have a rectangular shaped peg, which fits into a slot on the sides of his legs. Um, these work pretty damn well, frankly. Um, I've only run into one or two figures where they habitually fell off. Um, for the most part, they, uh, they stay on pretty well. Um, this is an extra set of hands. I'll cover these in more detail once I get the figure out of the tray. And what else do we got in this tray here? We have his shoulder armor. This is his right piece. As you can see, it's got an R um, molded in there. This would go onto his right shoulder. The reason why it's not with the main figure in the main tray is because that's also where his cape goes. So you have the choice of either putting his cape on or shoulder guards on both sides. All right, let's stick that back in there. He comes with a axe. I covered this axe in the uh, regular Knight of Accord review I just did. But this has different painted details on it. Same molded, same mold for the axe, but different painted details. Most mostly in the handle and the spike at the top. So it's got a different paint scheme. Right. He's got his sword and his sheath, and again, these are the same accessories that the uh, Knight of the Cord came with. However, these are painted differently. He's got purple and brown instead of black and blue. And as usual, the sword does fit in here very snugly, but it does fit. The sword itself is not a, a rubbery plastic. It's actually pretty sturdy and pretty sharp. So this is not a kid's toy. This is meant for an adult. And the scabbard itself has a mushroom peg on the bottom there, which uh, fits into a notch on his belt. He also has a third head sculpt or likeness. It's actually a blonde version of the Knight of Accord head, which is very good. I'm sorry, I was out of focus there for a second. Very good. All right, take the figure out of there. He has a shield, which again, instead of being blue is painted purple with his coat of arms there and it's got the crown it's painted on both sides it's very good he has a helmet 
here. If I can get it out of the tray. There we are. It's a standard white helmet. There is some detail along the back neck, but it's not painted. Um, I mentioned this in the uh, in the Orc and the uh, Knight of Accord review so far. Um, it does have pegs on either side to accommodate uh, different um, face shields. This one apparently, if you can see that, was pushed in. I don't know if you can see that. It's actually poking out the inside there. I'm not sure how frequent that happens. I've actually not noticed it until just now. Hopefully I can push that back out. Not supposed to happen. There we go. It did push right back out. Glad, too, because without the pegs, you can't put a face shield on. I keep going out of focus there. I apologize. All right. But, yeah, you use that helmet for these face shields. This one is the only one he comes with, apparently. Um, but it's got these peg holes here and some very thin plastic actually going around the hole itself. So um, it can be kind of difficult to fit these onto the uh, the helmet. You, I do recommend that you heat, heat these up. Um, for the holes themselves, I very carefully use a precision screwdriver um, and just use the shaft to kind of help stretch the hole out while it's warm, just very gently. I don't want to rip it. And then I put it on here, and then as it cools, it starts to shrink back down, and I get a good fit that way. Um, but you can get the basic idea that of how that looks when it's put together, and it looks quite good. I like it. I love the fact that uh, the detail was picked out in gold. Looks very nice. Like that quite a bit. Can't seem to get that back in the tray. He has a second helmet he comes with. This is the winged helmet painted in white this time with gold trim. Very cool. They did a good job on that. Um, here he has a second shoulder guard. This one is going to be his left side shoulder guard. This will be the one that will most likely be on the figure the majority of the time since because of his cape. Keep that off to the side there. And he has his other <laughs> alternate likeness. Out of there. It's a black gentleman with a blonde mustache, apparently. I wonder why they gave him a blonde mustache and a black beard, though. That's a little odd. You don't see that often. But anyway, multiple likenesses are always a good thing. Um, because the figure can only have one and it saves you from having to paint another head later when you customize a figure or buy a blank, for example. So I do like seeing the multiple heads. Here's the figure itself. Let's put his shoulder guard on so you can see how that looks. Fits in there very snug. All right. This just pegs into the same hole that his shoulder guard would normally be in. He's got a very nice detail. I like the I like the gold trim on the white armor. Purple loincloth right there, purple cape. Looks nice. Looks nice. Uh, here is his uh, thigh armor, which, as I said, would plug right into there. Let's see how well that works. Shouldn't be any issue. All right, fits very snugly. Looks good. And as I said, there's a peg hole on his scabbard and that would go into here. Although it looks like mine 
is filled with paint residue. I'm going to have to cut that out before I actually get this in there. But that's where he would that's where he would have his scabbard is in there. All right. Now the cape, as you can see, I'm kind of struggling with it while it's on. This is probably one of my least favorite accessories for these knights figures. Um just because it does not it, it's it's awkward. It doesn't want to stay on there. Um we can try it on the left shoulder, see if that's any better. Not really, because it goes, goes off to the side like that, so it looks funky. It's definitely meant to go on the on his right shoulder, and as you can see, it's it's kind of awkward. It's kind of awkward. Not a big fan of the cape accessories. So we're going to take that off. We're going to put this on for the sake of the review. Now, uh, let me see his head. I think his hair is removable. Yes, it is. Um, that's It's got a notch in both the hair and the back of his head. This way you can actually put his helmets on and still maintain the same facial likeness. So that's cool. Um... His head's on a ball joint. It's not hindered by his shoulder guards at all. Um, he can do a full 360. He can look down about that far. He can look up a decent amount. Um, you can move his head from side to side. And you don't really get much in the forward and back. I mean, it does have a barbell joint, but it's just the, this particular head doesn't allow for that much movement there. Um, when you have his shoulder pads on, um, his arms will be hindered, but to show you the full range of motion for the for the uh, the figure itself, he can do a full 360 without the pads there. He can lift his arms up about that high. He can has nothing at the bicep, but his elbows can bend 90 degrees up, not much down because of the elbow guard. And they rotate left and right. They don't do a full 360 because of the elbow guard. Um, his wrists can do a full 360. And the particular set of hands he has on here can bend up. And they can bend down. Um, if you were to swap that out for the alternate hands he comes with. Ah, you'll notice that the hinge is different. It allows him to bend in and out instead. I like the fact that they do that. They give you both options so that depending on which weapons or accessories you want to pose him with, he can make it look more natural and have his wrist bending in the appropriate place. Um, he has a ab crunch, which is on a ball joint, so it gives you a good range of motion up there. He can actually bend down a decent, like a little bit, and then back a decent amount too. You can definitely get your point across with him. Um, he does have something at the waist. It's part of his construction. It is going to be hindered by this, uh, by the belt piece, but you can twist it if you try. It's a little tight on mine, and I'm trying to wrap this up, so trust me, it's there. Uh, you can <laughs> spread his uh, legs about this far. Um, he can do the can-can about like this. Um, he's got double jointed knees, so he can bring his ankle back about that far. His ankle is on a, on a peg, so you can rotate it 360 degrees. You can bend his ankle back about that far, and you can bend it forward about that far. Um, before we do size comparison, let me just take a minute to point out the... Uh, the painted details on this guy, because they are really nice, and some of them are subtle, which is what makes it so nice. So he's got a very good likeness on his face there. Um, his individual rivets, as you can see, are picked out in paint. The knuckles on his gloves are picked out in paint. All of them, which is very good. Um, the buckles on his belt, as well as the rivets picked out in paint 
even the backs, uh, back buckles on his uh, leg armor picked out in paint. His feet, same thing. He looks great. He's a very well-painted figure. Um, he has very cool accessories. Uh, he is the leader of your troops, so everybody should have one. But the fact that he comes with three different face sculpts and uh, various accessories means that you could army build him if you chose. Uh, he is a very cool figure. And I think everybody should get one. Let's have a uh, size comparison now before I wrap this up. Here he is next to a modern G.I. Joe figure, which is basically the industry standard now for modern figures. As you can see, he is about four inches, if not a tiny bit taller. So he does fit in with the modern scale figure, at the 118 scale. Here he is next to a vintage G.I. Joe figure. As you can see, he's noticeably taller. So he definitely fits in better with the four inch figures than he does with the three and three quarter inch. So would I recommend this guy? I would. I think he looks great. I love the fact that they made him uh, close enough to the regular Accord Knight that it's clear to see where his allegiance is. And they made him different enough to let you know that he is a king. Purple is a very regal color. Um, white is a sign of purity, then the gold is a sign of, you know, of uh, wealth. So his color choices make a lot of sense. Um, I like the crowned head, uh, hair sculpt. It definitely gives you the impression of uh, royalty as well. Let me see his different head sculpts. I didn't notice them having a... Uh, A notch to wear the wig. I don't think they did, so. Ah, man, I can't get that out of there. Yeah, there's no notch in the back of that head. So he can't wear the crowned wig, and neither can the other one, the blonde head that I brought out earlier. Um, these would just be to be completely different characters. You can't just make anybody a king. Apparently, he has to be that guy. <laughs> um, but anyway, very good figure. I, I do recommend them. If you haven't picked one up, I suggest you do so before they're gone. And this has been AV. If you like this video, check out my channel. If you like what you see there, then please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.